At first it seemed like a good parking place, rather central to everything and convenient for working with the children. After the first rainstorm knocked down our laundry and buried it in a river of mud, we became aware that heavy rains might be a problem. A week later, we were having a weekly practice with some very loyal students from a, over a year ago. It was getting harder and harder to stay dry. The front gate to the school where we were practicing was locked, so we had to pass each instrument over the fence in the rain. Why don't we ask for the front gate? Simpler, you have to be pretty determined to practice in some of these places. By the time we headed back to the camper, we became aware that the rainstorm was Hurricane Alex and everything was filling with water fast. This was only after the first hour or two of rain. The heavy rains came solid for three days and did not stop until 27 to 30 inches of rain had fallen, and most of that in 24 hours. Again, all of these pictures were taken only after the first two hours of rain. Many bridges, trees, roadways, light poles, and more, anything close to the river, were destined to be destroyed. It might tomorrow. ocean on the other side. Look at the other side. Have a look at the other side. By the time we returned to our camper, we began to truly understand the quantity of water flowing through the city. I don't see how it wouldn't overflow the banks, at least to all those stadiums over there and all those football fields. The river flowed like this under our camper for nearly a week. This is the view out of our front door. Mm -hmm. We're now kind of camped in a river. <laughs> Here we were trying to keep our shoes dry. Mama was the only one with a pair of sandals, and barefoot on gravel wasn't very comfortable. The hurricane brought everything to a standstill. Electric service and clean water were very scarce for a while. That's a lot of what comes to our camper is this waterfall that's on the stairs. Well, this telephone that. pole there had, was headed towards our camper and Colleen noticed it just at the last moment and boosted it away. Elizabeth says the sewer feels as light as a feather, so we're worried about it floating off. The biggest problem we had was keeping up with the erosion under the camper legs. In addition, the community had lost all electric power, which meant no water for cleaning or bathing. This is one of the jacks that was continually giving us problems. Sarah and Jonathan were already soaked, so they were elected to fix it. You can hear our violin class in the background. The first evening of the storm, we went out to try to purchase some extra supplies, but it was too late. Stores were closed, most did not have any electric, and many roads near us were overrun with water. At least we have a policeman in front of us, so we could feel a little better about driving on the wrong side of the road. After about four days, the river under our house became a bit tamer and turned into the favorite play place of the community. The neighborhood children loved it. Fortunately, there are very few that lost their lives, but the damage to the roads and bridges was great. Houses anywhere near the river were overwhelmed with mud. These roads are ones we traveled often. I don't think any of us had ever seen so much rain. We certainly have much to be thankful for.